Good afternoon, good morning, good evening. Whatever time of the day it is you're watching today's video, I hope you're having a good one. All right, so we're going to today talk about how to represent non-proportional relationships with graphs, charts, um, tables, and up until this point we've been talking about just plain old proportional relationships. And remember, those were always graphs that went straight through the zero, zero point here, the origin, and always created a straight line. Well, today, they're not going to do that, so we're going to call them non-proportional. They still be straight lines, uh, also called linear equations, but they're just not going to go through the origin. So uh, whenever we do those, what we're going to look for, like this equation we're going to work with, see how it says plus 3? Anytime you have a plus or a minus after the x part, Okay, you're going to have a graph that does not go through the middle. So that's what we're going to be talking about. So we're going to do this in an equation, a table or chart, and then we're going to graph it, and then we're going to talk about some ways to figure out whether they are proportional or non-proportional. So first, let's talk about the situation here. Well, we have an equation. It says y equals 4x plus 3. And what this represents is, is the total charge, which is our answer for y, for putt-putt golf games, and that's the X, that's the number that'll change. We're going to put different numbers in for X, and it's going to give us different answers, depending on the number of games played, okay, and the, and the change in the cost. We're going to make a table and, a gra and graph those values for this situation, okay? So hopefully that helps us understand the situation. Now let's come over here. We're going to fill in some numbers here. So we're going to say 1, 2... 3 and 4. Nice easy numbers. And this, again, is the representation of the number of games played. Okay? And this is our x. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this number, we're going to put it here for x. Now, 4x means 4 times whatever number you put in. So the first one, we're going to do 4 times 1 for one game, which is 4, plus 3 gives us an answer of 7. Okay? Now we're going to do two for two games. So we're going to put two in for x. So four times two, which is eight, plus three gives us an answer of 11. The next one, we're going to put a three in this equation. So four times three is 12, plus three is 15. And the very last one, four times four, 16, plus three is 19. So now we've d designed or created a table or chart for the line that we're going to graph. Now, before we move on, let's talk about why this line is non-proportional. Other than the fact that it says plus 3, by what we're going to do next, you're going to be able to see this. Now, we've talked about a lot this right here. Y divided by X. Y divided by X. Here's our Y line. Here's our X line. So we're going to find out whether this is proportional or non-proportional based on doing this problem. So, 7 divided by 1 gives us an answer of 7. 11 divided by 2 gives us an answer of 5 and a half, 5.5. So at this point, since we got different answers for each one of these, that tells us it's a non-proportional situation. Okay? It's kind of like finding the average cost. Well, the average cost for one game is $7. But by the time you get down here to three games, if you do this problem, 15 divided by 3 you see the average cost has changed to 5, okay, and that would just keep happening. This would be 4.75, I think. Yeah, that's right. So, since this keeps changing, this is a non-proportional situation, okay? So now we're going to come down here, we're going to graph these points. Now, you might need to take a second, pause the video, and put some lines down here, okay, and these represent the number of games you played. So, one, two, three, four, and that's as far as the graph will go, but you could go all the way to eight. Try to make them as evenly spaced apart as you can. Then up on the left side, we're going to do cost in dollars, and I'm going to go by five. So, five, ten, fifteen, and twenty. Okay, so once you have that done, we're going to start graphing these points. Now, let's think about this situation. We would probably not use the number zero in this because why would you need to know the cost of zero games? That's obviously zero dollars. So zero, zero will not be a point on this graph. We're not even going to use it. The first point is going to be one, seven. 
So here's one game right here. So we go over one and up seven, which would be about right there. And that's our first point on this graph. Okay. The next one, 2, 11. Well, 2 is here. 11 would be about right here. Okay. So the cost for two games is $11. If we look up here, the cost for three games is 15, which is right here. The next one, the cost for four games is up here at 19. And we can see that this makes a straight line. However, in this situation, we have this question. Should the graph have a straight line, <coughs> excuse me, sorry, or a dotted line? Well, let's think about this. This is number of games, okay? One game is this much. Two games is this much. We wouldn't try to figure out how much a game and a half was. You can't pay for one and a half games or two and a half games or anything like that. So there aren't going to be any points in between right through here, okay? We can see that it's a, uh, not, it's, it is non-proportional because it doesn't go through zero, zero, but it's a straight line, okay? There's a constant involved that's four because that's what we're multiplying times x every time. But we're not going to put these points in here because there aren't any. You're not going to pay for half a game or a third of a game or a fourth of a game or any fraction of a game, okay? So we're not going to, we're not going to make a line here. We're not going to actually darken in this line because we know that we're not going to pay for portions or portions of games. So the answer to this is a dotted line. Please write a squiggly line under that and then a, another line right underneath it, okay? Now, let's go over here, and the last thing we're going to do is we're just going to talk about how to figure out whether we have proportional or non-proportional lines. And one of them we already talked about, okay? If the k, which is y divided by x, is constant, that means always the same, always the same, okay? That means it's proportional as long as, as, long as it goes to the, the origin, okay? So if we're finding the same answer up here, it's actually going to go through the origin. So that's just going to happen. If we get the same answer every single time, it's going to go through the origin, okay? Uh, but again, what we found up here when we did y divided by x, we got a different answer. It was not constant, okay? That makes it non-proportional. It did not go through the origin. And what we're going to start talking about, and this is going to be very important, when we start doing this plus something, in this case it's plus b, that represent, in this one we just did, the 3 is the b, okay? We're going to start calling our slope by this letter right here, the letter m. Now, I have no clue why they chose the letter m for slope. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense. There's not even an m in the word slope um, because the, I don't know, the s is taken maybe for side or something like that. So we're going to start having to think of the slope as the letter M. And we're going to start calling this B right here. This letter is going to be considered our Y intercept. Okay, when we have a line that actually goes through the Y axis, this number, whatever this number is after the X part, that's where it's going to go through the Y axis. Okay, so we're going to start calling it that. So when it, it's just a constant, when there's no plus or minus, we're going to call it k. But then when we start doing slope, because we have a plus or minus, it's, this k, as we know, was still the slope, but now we're going to start calling it the letter m. Okay, so m is slope. Okay, so that's it for your video. Hopefully you learned a little bit about this. We're going to be doing a lot of this in class, and hopefully graphing is going to be very easy to you the further we get into it, okay? So we'll see you in class. Have a great day.